Welcome back to Vintage Camera Digest. Today we're going back to 1973 to look at one of the most underrated 35mm cameras out there, the Konica Auto Reflex T3. So stick around. You know, from my perspective, Konica just doesn't get the love it deserves. A lot of folks might think of Konica as part of that last ditch effort from Minolta to keep their camera lines going. Matter of fact, if you search eBay for Minolta, you're just as likely to get as many results of Konica cameras as Minolta. And if you search Konica, well, you'll probably get more Minolta results. What I didn't realize until the last several years is that as a camera company, Konica really made some great evolutionary strides in camera design that we completely take for granted now. They were the very first to market with an autofocus camera, the C35 AF, in 1977. They were the first to release a camera with a built-in winder with the FS1 in 1979. And with the 1965 Auto Reflex, they were the first to offer auto exposure in a 35mm focal plane shutter SLR, a technology that they continued to refine over the next decade. Now, auto exposure cameras did exist prior to the auto reflex, but those were based on cameras with leaf shutter systems. And what amazes me most about the Konica auto reflex cameras is that they offer this level of automation in a mechanical camera. The batteries are only needed to power the meter. But let's back up a bit. The company that eventually became to be known as Konica had its start way back. Now, usually when I say way back on this channel, I'm probably talking about the 1940s or maybe the 1930s. But Konica can trace its roots back to the early 1870s when it began as a pharmacy that eventually got into the business of selling photographic products. And by 1903, they were producing their own camera. And throughout the next century, they would give us some great cameras and some of the most interesting designs in medium format, uh, the Rapid Omega series of rangefinders and the Connie Omega Flex. And maybe I'll have one of those on the channel one day, but today we're gonna be looking at this, the Auto Reflex T3. And I'm not gonna lie, this camera made me sit up and pay attention to Konica. But before we get into that, let's look at the history of this series of cameras. The original Auto Reflex was released in 1965 as the world's first auto exposure 35 millimeter focal plane shutter camera. And this camera is also unique as being the only 35 millimeter SLR ever to give the user the choice between full frame or half frame shooting. And I've never seen one of these in person, but I hope to get the opportunity to one day because I'd really like to see how that works. The camera was upgraded and replaced by the Auto Reflex T in 1968. Now, unfortunately, the T did away with that full frame or half frame feature, but it was a significant improvement over the original. The T was again upgraded in just a couple of short years to what we can call the Auto Reflex T2. The camera was never marked as T2, only T but there were enough variations between it and the earlier T that we've unofficially named it the T2 to distinguish it from the other. Then in 1973, we got the T3, which was a significant upgrade over the T2 with many of the mechanisms used for the shutter priority auto exposure completely redesigned. And they also added a depth of field preview and multi-exposure capability. The T3 was only about a year old when they released an upgraded version, the T3N, this time, they added a permanent hot shoe and a viewfinder blind. And just like before, Konica didn't actually rename the camera T3N. We just did that as an easy way to note the two versions. Finally, the T4 was released in 1978. Now, it didn't have much in common as far as looks are concerned with the earlier auto reflex models. It was a significant redesign. It was smaller, all black body. It wasn't quite as robust as the earlier models, but it offered some general upgrades over the earlier cameras in the series. But because of the build quality, many people will prefer the T3 over the T4 these days. So what makes the T3 such a great camera? Well, let's start with a few of the specs. It's got a copal square metal bladed shutter with flash sync at 125th of a second. TTL metering with two cadmium sulfide cells shutter priority auto exposure, multi-exposure capability, and shutter speed and f-stop visible in the finder. So let's look at the camera. As usual, we have the shutter release, film winding crank, and shutter speed dial over on the top right shoulder. Shutter speeds are one second to one one thousandth of a second plus B, 
And this is also where we have the multi-exposure lever. It sits just under and to the back of the shutter speed dial. Moving it in the direction of the arrow and holding it while you operate the wind lever will cock the shutter, but leaves the film in place. So there's no limit to how many exposures you can put on one frame of film. Right next to the multi-exposure lever is a little window that tells you if the shutter is cocked or not. If it shows red, the shutter isn't cocked. If it's green, you're good to go. Lifting up on the shutter dial will let you set the film speed, which is from ASA 12 to 3200. There's also a locking collar surrounding the shutter release, which you can use to lock the shutter and turn the metering off. Below the shutter release on the front is the self timer lever, which also doubles as the depth of field preview lever. Push it towards the lens for depth of field, push away from the lens for the self timer. And to trigger the self timer once you've set the lever, just push the little button in the center. Over on the left shoulder is the usual rewind crank. And just over the side are PC sockets for X and FP sync. On the lower left of the lens mount is the lens release button. To open the back of the camera, you'll need to pull down this relief lever, since the back latch isn't connected to the rewind lever in this case. And on the bottom, you've got the battery compartment, the tripod socket, and the film rewind button. And that about sums it up for the camera controls. One final and rather important thing I'll mention is that Konica supplied a terrific line of Hexanon lenses for these cameras. From 21 millimeter all the way to 1000 millimeter, plus a few zooms. One of those was actually a very focal lens. It was a 35 to 100 millimeter f2.8. And that was pretty impressive for the time. So now all we need to do is take it out for a shoot. So let's go. So I'm out here on this nice, clear, pleasant afternoon uh, at the Carroll County Public Works, but there's nothing cool about that other than this old equipment, road equipment that they have in the front yard. So um, I have got the Konica Auto Reflex T3. I actually have two of these in the bag. I have one with 100 speed and one with 400. The 100 speed film is the Kentmere 100 and the 400 speed is Tri-X. Um, so we're gonna get a couple of rolls shot out here today. Let's go. Right. So first of all, we're gonna start out with a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second. Hope to get some sort of shallow depth of field here. It's actually shoot telling me F4. And this is the camera with 100 speed in it. It's got a micro prism spot for focusing. No range finder, but that's okay. Let's say one five hundredth of a second. Let's go for something sort of shallow. Shoot on the back shadow side of it here. All right, so let's drop my shutter speed down to one sixtieth of a second. It's telling me F4 at one sixtieth of a second. So this camera does show me shutter speed and aperture information in the viewfinder. And I really like that. Back over here to the short lighting. All right, let's swap lenses. I'm gonna change to the 135 2.5, let's try that. So we got the 135 2.5 on now. Gonna put it in auto mode. I'm not sure what the minimum focusing distance is on this. Uh, it's not too bad. Say in 60 at f8. Let's go two point. Let's go 250. Get some sort of shallow depth here. So we're wide open on this. 
Let's slow the shutter speed down to 125, 1 125th of a second. That'll show me about 5.6. And let's go back up to 250. Shoot for something like F4. Or somewhere around there. Right. <clears throat> Let's drop it to one sixtieth of a second. What's it telling me? F eight sixty. All right. Not sure I like that shot. All right, I do see a shot here, but it's going to require the fifty. All right, let's swap lenses. And again, I am back over to the short lighting side of this. Still at 1 60th of a second. Aperture showing me like 6.7. Back here in the shadows. Showing me 60 at 6.7. Let's go up to 1 125th of a second. A little bit shallower depth of field. There are other pieces of equipment out here. So let's move on and find some other stuff. So the reason I'm drawn to old equipment like this, it's got rust, it's got a lot of surface texture. It's that surface texture mixed with hard light that really makes the shot interesting. Soft light wouldn't be nearly as interesting out here with this. All right, sticking with the 50 millimeter. Gonna go, well, it's higher. So 1 125th of a second at F8. I'm gonna take this off of auto because I've got some gravel here in the back that I don't want to influence the meter. All right, so 1 125th at F8. We'll do one at that. Actually, let's go on a little bit shallower depth of field. So I've got 1 250 at F4. And now let's go do 1 1 25th at F4. All right, so 1 250th at F4 is what it's telling me. All right. All right. Now let's go 1 1 25th at F4. W.A. Neal and Son Selling Agents, Atlanta, Georgia. Well, I can't not get that. So say in 125 at F8. So let's go 250 at 5.6. So F stops 5.6. All right. So it's telling me 1 125th of a second at F8. Let's check the depth of field preview. Let's go 5.6, so it's 250 at 5.6. Heck, let's go F4, 500 at F4. And now let's go 1 250th at F4. So we got a little bit of hazy clouds now. And some shallow-ish depth of field. So 1,500 at 2.8 is what this is telling me. We have just lost a lot of light. Sun is gone behind a hazy cloud, which is fine for this, because it's still fairly directional. I'm still seeing some hard shadow. It's just not as bright. Change your shutter speed to 1 250. We got like maybe F4 here. What does the depth of field preview show me? Yeah, I can work with that. So, also, we got good depth of field preview. 
here. I always like having a camera that has that. Slow the shutter speed down. Get a little bit more depth of field on this. Yeah, I like that. Let's go back to this plaque. Again, let's shoot from the back shadow side. So we're going 250 to the F4. All right, so I want to bring one thing about this camera to your attention. Uh, this is a fantastic camera, by the way. And if I haven't said so already, uh, it's a fantastic camera. Now, when you have this thing in auto exposure mode, and it's giving you something like F8, if you do the depth of field preview, it's actually gonna preview that at F8. Something about me thinks that that wouldn't work on a camera of this age. Cool. All right, we've lost a little bit of light again. But I'm going to use that to my advantage. It's now the lighting ratio is not quite as wide. Still getting some of that sun though. Still sort of sun hitting that, but 1 60th of a second at 5.6 is what it's telling me. Let's go for some shallow. So 125th of a second at f4. I do the depth of field preview. It's showing me F4. Some interesting intersecting lines here. If I keep the depth of field shallow, which is what I want to do. Sort of get a vertical out of that. That's sort of interesting. So I've got the 135 2.5 back on. I'm gonna try to finish this roll of film with this lens. Make me see things a little bit differently. And I want some shallow depth of field here. I'm gonna bracket this one because I'm shooting into a lot of light tones. Right, so at one five hundredth of a second, it's telling me F4. I like that idea. All right, and then let's open up all the way. Back up just a bit. So I can get all these points of interest. All right, moving on to a new piece of machinery. Now this one's not very big, but I bet I can finish this roll there. Still got the 135 on. So that was 60 at F8. All right, I don't want to drop the shutter speed to 1 30th of a second, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna change it to 5.6 just for a tad of bracketing. All right, so let's just see how close I can get right there. So this was a rather productive spot. I like these places where you can come and find one or two subjects and shoot a lot of different angles and get all these really cool 
compositions of lines and texture intersecting and it's it's a good spot. I love this sort of stuff um, all right so that's two rolls down uh, of Kent Mirror 100 I'm gonna process this in Ilfosol 3 again because I like how that worked last time um, all right so let's go back see what we got so that was a pleasant shoot I don't think there were any award winners in there but I do love subjects like that you know where you can just explore it with the camera and start picking out these little pieces of it here and there and in retrospect i'm not sure my film choice was the best for this the kent mirror did really well in contrasty situations last week but it was just a bit lacking in contrast this week and i struggled to get it to a point where it didn't look terrible and i think color film might have done well here too as for the camera i was really impressed on the shots that i did bracket i found i could have just trusted the camera meter and saved some frames of film and the lenses I used were really good, especially that 40 millimeter 1.8. There's a lot of praise given to that lens online, and I can see why. It's a very interesting focal length, and that 1.8 f-stop is really nice. Now, there's really just one thing about this camera that I'd change. It doesn't have any exposure compensation. I mean, it's an auto-exposure camera, and it doesn't let you dial any compensation in. In the camera manual, it just says to adjust the film speed to make auto-exposure adjustments. I mean, that's certainly doable, but it's not how we're usually used to doing that. I guess the most probable reason for the lack of this particular control is that they just couldn't get it to work with the type of auto exposure system used here. You remember, this is a manually controlled shutter, and most cameras that featured auto exposure use electronically controlled shutters. But I think the fact that Konica was able to incorporate shutter priority into a mechanical camera is no less than amazing. And if you're looking for a great, well-built camera system that also just happens to have a complement of great lenses, you should probably give the Konica Auto Reflex T3 a look. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments and consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. I still have a lot planned. I will see you next time.